Okay, so get this. Uh. Today, we are taking a deep dive into the world of immune checkpoint inhibitors. Oh, cool. Which, if you haven't heard of them, they're these therapies that are basically like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. showing your immune system how to fight cancer, basically. Yeah. And we've got expert speaker here to kind of walk us through all this really cool stuff. Yeah. Happy to be here. It's such a cool area of medicine, you know. We're right. really figuring out how to empower the body to totally. use its own defenses. Yeah. And, you know, I'm all about a good analogy. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Reading these articles from Assy Genie, I was like, it's like we're hacking into our immune system uh -huh. and like removing the limits, yeah. you know, All like, right. but I feel like before we get too far ahead of ourselves, we should like back up for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just be like, you know, for sure. Why is boosting our immune response so important in, you know, right. the fight against cancer, like in the first place? Well, so cancer cells are really tricky, right? <sighs> they evolve in ways to kind of evade detection by the immune system. Oh, Almost good. like they're wearing camouflage. Sneaky. Yeah, so they can like hide from our immune system's radar. Wow. And they can actually send out signals that suppress the immune response, so it makes it even harder for our bodies to, you know, fight back. So they're like extra sneaky. Extra sneaky, yeah. It's like they're playing hide and seek, but the stakes are really high. Yeah, exactly. So that's where these immune checkpoint inhibitors come into play, right? Exactly. They're right. like the... What would be a good analogy, like the X-ray vision goggles or something? Yeah, yeah. That let our immune system be like, wait a minute. Right. I see you. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Okay. It's like we're giving the immune system yeah. the tools it needs to see through that camouflage. Yes. So essentially, these drugs work by targeting these specific proteins on our immune cells, and these proteins are called immune checkpoints. And you can think of them like an off switch that kind of regulates our immune response mm -hmm. because we don't want our immune system like constantly going and attacking everything. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. That would be bad. We don't want it going rogue or anything. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So we need to make sure it's like carefully controlled. Okay. But the thing is, cancer cells can actually hijack these checkpoints. What? So they can actually flip the off switch to avoid being attacked by the immune system. No fair. Yeah, they're basically mm. using our body's own defenses against us. They're like those bosses in video games that, like, steal your power-ups. Exactly. Yeah. I hate those. But the good news is yeah. researchers have been working really hard okay, yeah. developing ways to fight back. Phew. And that's where these checkpoint inhibitor drugs come in. Okay. So they're designed to block those off switches. Got it. So that the cancer cells can't manipulate the immune system anymore. And this allows our immune cells, especially these T cells that you were reading about, to recognize and attack the cancer more effectively. The T cells, th those are like the big guns, yeah. right? Yeah, the heavy hitters. It's like they're like the um, yeah. immune system's like elite squad. Exactly. But, yeah. Right. They're trained to seek and destroy. Cool. So there are different types of checkpoint inhibitors. Yeah. That target different checkpoints or Yeah, you got it. it's like using are. different keys for different locks. Okay. And the articles that you shared focus on three main ones. Okay. CTLA4, PD1, and PDL1. Got it, got it. Okay. And each one kind of acts at a different stage of the immune response. Okay, so it's not like one size fits all. Exactly. We need like different strategies yeah. depending on which checkpoint the cancer cell is like Messing with. Exactly. We yeah. gotta we gotta outsmart them. Oh man. So CTLA four, for example, that yeah. acts really early on. Okay. Kind of like a checkpoint right at the beginning of a race. Okay. It makes sure that the immune response isn't too aggressive right out of the gate. Okay. It's more like, you know, further down the track. You've got PD one and PDL one, and they're regulating T cell activity right there. Like yeah. at the tumor site. So CTLA four is like the initial kind of like safety check right to make sure things aren't getting yeah. too yeah. crazy right out of the gate yeah but then pd1 pdl1 that's more like exactly okay we're like along the way now making mm. sure things are still we're at the battle lines now yes exactly yeah that's good and you know those sneaky cancer cells that we were talking about oh no what are they doing now well they can actually use these checkpoints to their advantage oh come on so they can like throw a wrench in the works no fair and make it harder for the immune system to do its job so how effective are these checkpoint inhibitors really then yeah because i was reading about you know some pretty amazing success stories Absolutely. in these articles but like yeah. Is it hype or hope, you know? It's definitely hope. Okay, good. You know, we're seeing some remarkable success 
with these <laughs> treatments. Especially for cancers like melanoma, lung cancer, bladder cancer, okay, kidney cancer. <laughs> um, you know, we're talking about improved survival rates. Okay. Long term remission. Yeah. Even complete responses in some cases. Wow, that's amazing. It's really groundbreaking stuff. So I have to ask about this one study. Yeah, yeah. That you sent me. I think you know the one I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. About the melanoma patients yeah. where they got the combination therapy. Yeah, yeah. That just like blew my mind. I know. That study was incredible. They basically combined two different checkpoint inhibitors. Okay. So they were targeting both CTLA-4 and PD-1. Okay. And they saw these like response rates as yep. high as 60% in some cases. Wow. Which is significantly higher than with either treatment alone. That's incredible. It's like we're giving those T cells like a yeah. double dose of power-ups? Totally. Yeah, like they're they're ready to go. Okay. So that begs the question then if this stuff is so effective, yeah. why aren't we using it for everything? What's the catch? Right. Well, like any good superhero story, okay. there are always challenges. Okay. And one of the big ones with these checkpoint inhibitors is that not everyone responds to them. Really? In the same way. Huh. So some patients have these like remarkable, long-lasting responses. Okay. And then others see little to no benefit at all. Oh, wow. So it's not a magic bullet. Sadly. Yeah, not quite a magic bullet. Either. Why is that? Do, do we know? Like, why do some people respond and others don't? That's the million dollar question, right? Yeah. Researchers are trying to figure that out. Okay. It's probably a combination of things, right? Like the specific type of cancer, okay. the patient's overall health, and even just like yeah. individual differences in their immune system. So it's like everyone's kind of like a, yeah. their cancer is like a unique puzzle. Exactly. We gotta figure out all the pieces. Yeah, exactly. We're 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 getting better at figuring out those pieces though. Okay, good. You know, and as we learn more, we can develop more targeted treatments. Right. But we also have to remember, even with these incredible advances, yeah, there's still some risks. Okay, you're talking about like the side effects that they were talking about in the articles. Exactly. The IRAE. The immune related adverse events, yeah. Those caught my eye, for yeah. sure. And I bet our listeners are like, wait a minute, hold on. For sure. Tell me more about this. So, For sure. What's the deal with those? Yeah, so uh, because we're taking the brakes off the immune system, right, what? sometimes it can get a little overzealous. Okay. And it can start attacking healthy cells and tissues. Oh, no. And that's what causes these IRAEs. So it's like those P cells? Yeah. In their, like, eagerness to go after the cancer? Yeah. They might accidentally hit like a, a friendly target. Exactly, oh, yeah. It's okay, like, yeah. imagine you've got this really vigilant security guard. Okay. And they're suddenly given free reign to, like, apprehend any potential threats. They might be really good at catching the bad guys. Yeah. But there's also a chance they might mistakenly, you know, apprehend an innocent bystander. Yeah, that makes sense. It's a tough job, right? It is, yeah. It's all about balance. Yeah. Got to keep things in check. Exactly. And that's why, you know, close monitoring and management of these IREs is so important. All right. The good news is most of these side effects are manageable. Okay. That's good to know. Especially when they're caught early on. So knowledge is power in this case. Exactly. The more we know, <laughs> the better so we it. can kind of advocate for ourselves, be aware of what's going on. Absolutely. But before we move on to the future of immunotherapy, yeah. I did want to circle back to something in these articles that I thought was so fascinating. Yeah, yeah. Which is the CD8 plus T cells. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which I think they were calling them cytotoxic T cells yeah. as well. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Which, I mean, honestly, the way they describe how they function is just wild. Mm. These CD8 plus T cells, they're like, I don't know, like tiny little assassins yeah. going around. And they're just like total assassins taking out these cells. Yeah, that's a really good way to put it. With extreme prejudice. While other parts of the immune system are kind of like raising the alarm, you know, yeah. sounding the alarm bells like, hey, there's something bad here. Right. These CD8 plus T cells are like the ones who go in and, you know, they deliver the final blow. They deliver the final blow. They've got it. Like it's kind of scary, but also kind of cool. Yeah, it's very precise. Yeah. You know, they have this very specific mechanism for for how they kill the the target cells, the cancer cells. Yeah, and, and it's called like the perforin granzyme pathway. Right? <laughs> yes, exactly. Which I mean, come on, that sounds like I know. It sounds like something out of like a sci fi movie. Straight out of like a sci fi action film. Right. Yeah. It's very dramatic. So how does that work? Because I was reading about it and I was like, I don't even Basically the C D eight plus T cell releases these proteins, right? 
Okay. Called perforin and granzymes. Got it. And uh, perforin is like, you know, imagine okay. a drill. Okay. It basically punches holes in the cancer cell's membrane. Oh, no. So it's like, whoa, you know. It's poking holes in it? Poking holes in it. Oh, wow. Well. And then the granzymes, which are these other, like, tiny enzymes, they yeah. can get in through those holes. Oh. And they basically set off this process called apoptosis. Which is basically like... This is like programmed cell death. Self-destruct. Exactly. It's like hitting the self-destruct button on the cancer cell. That's so cool. And and the really amazing thing is these checkpoint inhibitors we've been talking about, yeah. they actually make these CD8 plus T cells even more effective. Really? At this at this whole process. It's like they were already good, but now... It's like giving them, you know, like... Yeah, yeah. Better weapons, better intel. Yeah, enhanced, yeah. Yeah, they're like, all right, we're ready to go now. They can, like, really hone in on their targets. Exactly. exactly. This is incredible. And it seems like, you know... Yeah. Obviously, so much potential here, so I'm really curious. Yeah. What's next, you know? Yeah. What does the future hold for immunotherapy? That's what's so exciting about this field is that it's constantly evolving, right? Like every day there's something new. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that I think is really, really promising is this idea of combination therapy. Okay. So that's where instead of just using one checkpoint inhibitor, yeah. we might use like two or three together. Oh, wow. Where's or that? we might combine them with some of the more traditional treatments like chemotherapy or radiation. So it's like instead of sending in one superhero, we're sending in... Like whole Justice League. Yeah, I was going to say, like, the Avengers right. were bringing everyone together. Because each one has their own strengths, right? And so if we can combine them in a smart way, then we can actually get even better outcomes. And we saw that. I mean, that's what that study was showing. Right? Exactly, with the melanoma study. Exactly. With right, the combination therapy, yeah. So that was a really big breakthrough. It yeah. really showed the power of of combining these different approaches. Teamwork. Teamwork, exactly. Even at the even at the microscopic level. Oh yeah. But you know, it does it begs the question of like yeah. with all these different options, how do we know? Right, which one to use? Which one's the right one for each patient? And that's where personalized medicine is becoming really important. Okay, so that's like we're taking all the information we can about your specific cancer. Exactly. And then being like, okay. Yeah, what's the best approach for you? What's going to work best for this? And we're getting really good at figuring out, like, you know, the genetic makeup of a tumor, okay. the tumor microenvironment. We haven't even talked about that. but Oh, yeah. Tell me more about that because that sounded fascinating. Uh, it's basically like the neighborhood that the tumor lives in. Okay. And it can really influence how well the immune system can, you know, do its job. Okay. So it can either help or hurt. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes the tumor, like, builds a fortress around itself. Oh, no. Those sneaky little... It makes it really hard for the immune cells to get in there. Ah, uh, They're always up to something, aren't they? They are. But we're getting better at kind of, like, you know, how to... breaking down those fortresses or even, like, reprogramming the tumor microenvironment oh, well, to make it more immune friendly. That's incredible. So we're basically waging this like strategic battle on multiple fronts. Yes. Offense, defense. We're using everything we've got. We're bringing up the big guns. That's amazing. And and this is this is just the beginning. Right. There's so much more like There's more. I mean, we could do a whole other deep dive on this. Okay, well, let's But, you know, there are things like car art T cell therapy. Oh, yeah, that one that one was wild. Where we can actually like take a patient's own T cells, genetically engineer them in the lab, yeah. make them even better at, at killing the cancer cells. It's like we're giving them like That's a superpower. A superpower, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like go forth and destroy. That is wild. And the fact that like you said, this is really just the beginning is, I mean... We're just scratching the surface, I, I think. That's incredible. Oh, what's possible? And it makes me like, I don't know, really hopeful. Me too. For the future. Me too. Because... The more we learn about the immune system, right. the more potential we unlock for these even better, less toxic treatments. Yeah, we're not just like attacking the cancer directly anymore. We're not just using like, you know, brute force anymore. Right. We're like enlisting our body to help us fight back. We're being smarter about it. This is amazing. Yeah, it's a new era of medicine for sure. Well, expert speaker, this has been incredible. Thank you so much for walking us through all of this. Oh, it's been my pleasure. I could talk about this stuff all day. It's amazing to see how far we've come. Yeah, yeah. And to think that, you know, yeah. these groundbreaking therapies were once just, you know, an idea. A glimmer of hope. And now it's it's becoming a reality for so many people. And they're only getting better. 
That's so cool. And I think, you know, yeah. it's really a testament to, you know, the power of research. For sure. And the dedication of so many people working in this field. Absolutely. Yeah. And to our listeners, thank you for, you know, joining us for this deep dive. Mm. And remember. Yeah. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. So keep learning. Keep asking questions. Exactly. The more you know about this stuff, the better equipped you are to, you know, talk to your doctors. Yeah, advocate for yourself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And make informed decisions about your health. Absolutely. This is awesome. Well, until next time. See you later. <laughs>